Hey everyone, so we're going to do a quick little Pro Tools tour. Just getting used to the main windows and just noodling around a little bit. So you can use pretty much any session with some music in it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is use the zip file that's located in module one called demo session one. So if you're taking the course, then you should have that session available to you. Just download that zip file. And I've already downloaded it. And I also have Pro Tools installed on my computer, which is also a requirement. So I am going to open up that zip file as soon as I find it. And I'm going to do that by double clicking the zip file first. So I just happen to have it in my downloads here. And I'm going to double click it. That will give me a regular folder. And then if you double click on that folder, you will see an audio files folder, a session file backups folder. Wave cache. We don't have to worry about any of these, but we do want to worry about the little Pro Tools icon file with .ptx after it. That is for a Pro Tools session file. So if you just double click that guy, Pro Tools will begin to load. And sometimes, especially if it's the first time, Pro Tools takes a long time to get running, up and running. It will scan for plugins that are already on your computer and check for interfaces, all kinds of stuff like that. You don't have to have an interface, but it's good. It will also check for licensing. And eventually you will come up with a window that looks like this. Now, a lot of us are used to, if you have a Mac and you go into full screen, there's a little issue with Pro Tools that you lose all these great file pull down menus. So it's much better not to use full screen with Pro Tools on the Mac. Instead, if you hold down Option and then click the plus that appears in that green circle, it will fill in without actually going to full screen. And then what we're going to do is before we do anything else, we're actually going to go check the other window too. So to do that, I'm going to go to Window. And then I'm going to go down to there. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I always use this shortcut, which is command or control if you're on a PC equals. I never ever look for this in window. Uh, it's just so slow. Uh, but we can do it this way this time to make sure that we don't need to worry about the shortcut right now. So window and then either mix or edit. Those are the two main windows in Pro Tools. And we are in the edit window first. So I'm going to click mix. And because I have two screens, it actually showed up on a different one. The mix window may look all sorts of different sizes when you bring it up. You want to do the exact same thing you did with the other window, which is hold down option and then click on the plus so that it fits the screen. And I'm not sure how it works on Windows, but I imagine there's just a full screen mode. There doesn't seem to be, I haven't heard of issues where uh, these upper menus disappear on Windows. I think it just happens on the Mac. And again, the shortcut that you are gonna that is going to be your friend for the whole time you use Pro Tools is Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and plus or equals. They're the same key, right? Plus and equals right next to delete on your keyboard. So command equals or control equals will pop back and forth between the two main windows, which you'll end up doing a ton of. So that's our first goal for today is just to be able to switch between the mix and edit windows and get them the right size, which is filling the screen without actually going to full screen. So command equals back and forth. And you can see we have a few tracks here. One, two, three, four, five, and a master fader, which is like an overall volume. And you can see the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, and then the master fader. So. The edit window is mainly for seeing and editing, kind of makes sense, the audio in your session or the MIDI or whatever else it might be. So lots of things can be edited in the edit window. A lot of your playback buttons are here as well. Uh, and then if I'm in the mix window, this is the place where you can adjust volume really easily. We can see our volume sliders. If I hit play, we see we have this. We have this kind of fun, a little bit goofy 80s or 70s sounding tune, right? It's pretty fun. 
So uh, we are going to, I'm switching back and forth, right? So we can see the volume sliders here in the edit window. And once we can switch comfortably, remember the other way to do it is window and then mix or edit the opposite one of what you're in. Easy way to do it, but command equals become will become almost second nature to you. Okay, so first thing that we want to do in our little tour is just figure out how to either listen to an instrument on its own or mute a single instrument or a couple instruments. And that is the S and the M. So S for solo separates the instrument. Although if you want to get more than one, you can solo more than one and hear both of them together. But it isolates one instrument. And you'll notice if you hover, you'll also see the word solo. And the M is for mute. So I can either mute a single instrument. So if I'm playing back and I hit mute, I will stop hearing the drums. And if I want to just hear the drums, that's when I hit solo. And these sound like they're real drums because I'm hearing somebody in the room here. Or some kind of reverby thing happening in the background there. Something's going on back there. So I think that's a real drummer there, not uh, a print of, of MIDI audio. So we can hear our, our drums soloed. And then while soloed, I can solo the, dr the drums in the bass and get both. Now the bass is definitely some kind of MIDI or synth. And there's nothing going on in the synth right here, but I can back up. Cool. So we can actually solo and mute instruments in either window. So I'm going to hit command equals again. And then you'll notice that here's our separate tracks and I can see the volume. S and M are there. Solo and mute are right there. So I can do the same thing here. Cool. So that was goal number two, being able to solo and mute in both windows. And now let's just play with the volume of an individual track. So the easiest place to do that is in the mix window, this window that I'm in. And again, if you want to make sure you're in the right one, you can look for the check mark on the window in the window pull down, right? Mix. So I'm going to play this back. And how about I just play with the organ volume? So all I need to do is move this slider. It's pretty, the visual for it's pretty good, right? It looks about right. So very easy to play with the volume of an individual instrument. You just move the slider up and down. And then while we're also in the mix window, we can adjust the overall volume that's coming out our interface or out our computer speakers or out our headphones, all the same from the master fader. So that's the entire song in the master fader. So if you want just the overall volume to change a little bit, you can use the master fader. And then if you want to, to adjust the balance, that's where you're going to change the volume of individual instruments. Cool. And finally, let's do one other thing. I'm going to switch windows. I'm back in the edit window. And let's just talk about playback for a second. So the easiest way to choose a spot to play back is to just click somewhere inside 
the window where there are tracks, right? You can also do it on the master fader. You can't do it outside in this gray area where new tracks might be added. But anywhere inside this area, I can pretty much click. You can also click up in the rulers up here at the top, but it's easier to just grab whatever spot. So maybe I'm trying to listen to the bass right here. I might solo the bass and then put my cursor right here. And you'll notice that I can only do the the highlighting only happens. I can't actually get in between two of these grid lines. Hopefully you can see those grid lines. So you see the grid lines here. Right now I can only select on the grid lines. That's because of a little box right here that's selected as grid. So if you do want to get in between grid lines, you just switch to slip, which we'll talk about way more later on. But that's if you're having trouble getting in between because you just want to get in one specific little spot, slip is what you want to be in. Otherwise, grid's fine. Grid will keep you on the beat when the mix or when the when the music is basically recorded to a click. So maybe I just want to hear the bass right here. So I can highlight that section if I want to by just clicking and dragging, or I can just click right before it, hit space bar to play. Notice I soloed my bass so I'd be able to hear it alone. And your other option is make your click and then just hit the play button up here. So pretty simple, very intuitive way of playing back. If you want to go straight to the beginning of your session, it's kind of hard to click right at the beginning. So there's a very easy trick for that. You just hit return or enter, and that will take you exactly to the beginning. So that's a nice way to jump right to the start. So you could really just hit return and then space bar, and that will start your session right at the top. Right, and then I hit spacebar again to stop it if I want to. And again, I can hit return or enter, and then any of these guys as well stop, play, or spacebar and spacebar again to stop it. And then if I just want to hear one specific section, I can always do this highlight and just hit spacebar, and it will automatically stop at the end of the selection. Cool, and there's also a way to loop that playback, which we'll talk about later, but it's easy too. So hopefully that was a fun little intro. It's very simple. I would just mess around, switch back and forth, click on stuff, listen to different instruments soloed or muted, uh, change the volume of stuff, just to get used to the interface and what it's like to just listen to a piece of music inside of the Pro Tools interface. So have fun. Hope that's fun and easy, and I'll see you in the next one.